When I grow up, Sally Ride by Anne Marie Anderson, illustrated by Gerald Kelly, read by Mr. Kilby. My name is Sally Kristen Ride. I was born on May 26, 1951, in Los Angeles, California. My dad, Dale, was a college professor, and my mom, Joyce, was a teacher. I had a younger sister named Karen, but I called her Bear because I had trouble saying her name. I grew up in a cozy home with a lot of books, and I liked to read. My favorite stories were mysteries, spy stories, and science fiction novels. I liked Nancy Drew, James Bond, and Superman. I loved science, too. I spent a lot of time experimenting with my chemistry set and telescope. I also loved sports. I read the sports pages of the newspaper, especially if there was an article about my favorite baseball team, the Los Angeles Dodgers. I memorized details about the players' ratings and batting averages, and I dreamed that one day I might play baseball for the Dodgers. When I wasn't reading about sports, I was playing football, softball, or soccer with kids in the neighborhood. I didn't mind being the only girl who wanted to play. I just wanted to win. I learned early in life that it pays to be a team player, and I was usually the first person picked when we chose teams. My love of sports led me to tennis. I practiced hard and was determined to play well. By the time I was 12, I was competing all across America and winning. Instead of playing for the Dodgers when I grew up, I now wanted to be a professional tennis player. Thanks to my tennis talent, I received a scholarship to attend a private high school in Los Angeles. In my junior year there, I took a physiology class taught by Dr. Elizabeth Momertz. That class changed my life. Dr. Momertz taught me how to use the scientific method to solve problems. I had always loved puzzles, mysteries, and data. And now I realized that becoming a scientist would involve all of those things. I had a new dream to pursue. I graduated from high school as one of the top six students in my class. Then I took physics classes and played tennis at Swarthmore College in Swarthmore, Pennsylvania, before transferring to Stanford University in Palo Alto, California. My college, Stanford University. I loved my science classes at Stanford, but in my junior year, I took a class about the playwright William Shakespeare. I also loved his plays. When I graduated from Stanford in 1973, I received two degrees, one in physics and another in English. I stayed at Stanford for five more years, earning a master's degree in physics and a PhD in astrophysics. My research at Stanford involved studying energy given off by stars but I wasn't sure what type of job I wanted now that I was leaving school as Dr. Sally Ride, the Milky Way Galaxy. Then one day I was reading the Stanford Daily Newspaper, an ad from the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, said they were looking for 35 new astronauts. For the first time, women were invited to apply. Suddenly, I knew exactly what job I wanted, to be an astronaut. I sent in my application that day. Could this be me? More than 7,000 men 
and 1,000 women responded to the ad, and I was chosen as one of 208 finalists. After a week-long interview and months of waiting, I got a phone call from NASA offering me a position in the astronaut class of 1979. Along with five other women and 29 men, I was thrilled. For the next year, the other astronaut classmates and I learned all about the space shuttle. We studied math, computer science, navigation, meteorology, physics, and engineering. I ran every day and lifted weights to keep in shape, and I learned how to parachute during a NASA survival course. Though only some astronauts are pilots, all astronaut candidates had to spend time training in a two-seat T-38 jet. I liked flying so much, I eventually went on to earn my pilot's license. After a year of training, I became an astronaut, but I still had to be assigned to a space mission, and that could take years. In the meantime, I joined a team of engineers. We developed a special 50-foot-long robotic arm called a Remote Manipulator System, or RMS, that would be used during missions. The RMS in action. I also became NASA's first female capsule communicator, or CAPCOM. The CAPCOM is the only person on Earth who is allowed to talk to the astronauts while they are in space. My work as CAPCOM during the Shuttle Columbia's second and third missions proved that I was a team player who could stay calm under pressure. Then, in April 1982, my biggest dream came true. I was chosen along with astronauts Robert Crippen, Frederick Hauck, John Fabian, and Norman Thagard to fly on the seventh space shuttle flight. At 32 years old, I would be the youngest American and the first American woman in space. I spent the next year working closely with the other crew members to prepare for our flight. Finally, on June 18, 1983, I traveled into space on the Challenger Space Shuttle. It was the best day of my life. During our mission, astronaut John Fabian and I successfully used the RMS. We also oversaw science experiments that had been sent into space by companies and schools. But my favorite thing about space was the view of Earth every night before I went to bed. It was incredible. After we returned to Earth, I received a lot of attention because I had been the first American woman in space. I wished people would focus on the exciting advancements in science that had taken place on the shuttle instead. Still, I came to enjoy being an inspiration to young women and girls around the country. I was lucky enough to get a second chance to return to space. On October 5th, 1984, I flew on Challenger again. It was the 13th space shuttle mission. This time, I wasn't the only woman on board. Astronaut Catherine Sullivan was part of the crew too. In June 1985, I was assigned to fly in space a third time but my training came to a halt when a terrible tragedy occurred. On January 28th, 1986, the same shuttle that I had taken to space, Challenger, exploded just after takeoff, killing all seven crew members. 
The country was shocked. Those astronauts had been my friends and co-workers, and I was deeply saddened by the Challenger disaster. President Ronald Reagan formed a committee of 13 people to investigate the accident and determine what had gone wrong. I was the only astronaut he asked to join. After the investigation, I joined NASA's administration and helped plan the space program's future. Then in 1987, I returned to Stanford University for a science fellowship. And in 1989, I became a professor and director of the California Space Institute at the University of California in San Diego. I had returned to my earlier passion, physics research. The surface of the moon. My love of science had taken me to great heights, and I wanted to pass that joy on to others. So in 1986, I co wrote a children's book called To Space and Back to share my amazing experiences in space with others. I went on to write six more books for children about science and space. In 1995, I helped NASA launch a project to enable middle school students to take photos of Earth using a special camera aboard space shuttle missions. In 2001, EarthCam was permanently installed on the International Space Station. EarthCam. Photos taken from EarthCam. Today, Students around the world can request new images to be taken from space, and they can also search EarthCam's library of existing photos. Middle school students also have access to close-up photos of the moon's surface through the MoonCam project, which I also worked on with NASA. The International Space Station. In 2001, I founded my own company, Sally Ride Science, to encourage children, especially girls, to stay interested in science and math. Sally Ride Science brings science to life for students and teachers around the country through workshops, educational materials, and science festivals. I died on July 23, 2012, from pancreatic cancer at the age of 61. I received many honors and rewards in my life, including induction into the National Women's Hall of Fame, the Astronaut Hall of Fame, and the Aviation Hall of Fame. But my greatest honor was serving as an inspiration to young people around the world. Timeline. May 26, 1951, I was born in Los Angeles, California. 1973, I graduated from Stanford University with degrees in physics and English. 1978, I was chosen to join NASA and become part of the astronaut class of 1979. June 18, 1983, as a member of the Challenger Space Shuttle crew, I became the youngest American and the first American woman in space. October 4th, 5th, 1984, I flew on the Challenger again in another space shuttle mission. 1986, I co-wrote a children's book called To Space and Back. 1989, I became a professor and director of the California Space Institute at the University of California in San Diego. 2001, I founded a company, Sally Ride Science, to help kids become interested in math and science. July 23rd, 2012, I died of pancreatic cancer. Glossary.